welcome back to the world of movie melee i am your host caleb coho joined by no one today it is just me as we get back into another round one match in the summer series tournament my favorite time of year 32 people enter and only one well this year two are going to leave in a battle for the championship uh it's going to be a good match today the 11th seed versus the 22 seed we got Antonio Chavez versus Dean Manis, a battle between the storied factor rivalry, Fun DMC, versus the newly branded Rogue Nation. Uh, it should be a good one, a fun one through and through, and I intend to have a good time watching it. Uh, bringing in first, uh, representing the Rogue Nation, it is Dean the Bat Manis and his manager, Jack Pinchuk. Uh, you guys are in the tournament. It's your first tournament, Dean. Uh, your thoughts on being here and taking on a season pro like Antonio? Uh, very excited to be in the tournament, obviously. Um, tough draw, I think. Tough draw for me. Seed wasn't as high as I would have liked it to be um, because my last melee match didn't go how I wanted it to go. And so I looked, went over the tapes, took a look at them, and the only thing that I could figure out changing was I wasn't vertical enough. You know, So now I'm standing. I got the vertical board. So I'm just everything's looking up for me. I'm ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. You... Oh, for sure. I guess we're good. Uh, Dean... You're a great guy, great player. Uh, I know you. Uh, I know last match didn't go the way you wanted it to, but I have full confidence in you. This is a great matchup for you. I think you can take Antonio. Uh, nothing against him, but uh, we, we we don't plan on losing this one today. So let's play. A lot of heat coming out of Jack Pinchuk, uh, which happens a lot if you tune in to picture this. Uh, joining us next, the higher rank competitor, it is the assassin himself, Antonio Chavez, and his manager, the legendary hard target, Jake Meltzer. Uh, you are back in the tournament again. Tournament season has not really been your bag the last couple of years. Not a lot of good luck in round one. You lost to Matthew uh, last year in the melee tournament. Uh, but your record is still very high. Your accuracy very high. You have been around and won a lot of matches for a reason. Uh, your thoughts coming into this round one match? Are you nervous about playing Dean, or do you think you could break that round one loss streak? I'm just hoping to finally get my first win in a different state because now I'm officially in Virginia and this is my new apartment. So I'm hoping to finally start this era off on a good note. Uh, listen, I never like to, you know, just besides my seating, I like to take everyone seriously. I'm sure Dean's a good player. So I'm hoping to see that uh, still ends up in my favor. But uh, I'm just excited to be back in Melee, man. So just hoping to get this uh, underway. Yeah, uh, I'm excited for you to be back in Melee, too. You've been a really good run in fandom this year, but um, I'm excited for you to be here. And uh, it's fitting that you're wearing a Rocky shirt because this is, I would say, uh, with him draped in the American flag because it is, it, is, it is an epic America versus Canada confrontation today. <laughs> and uh, we are hoping that America, as usual, will come out on top uh, in these scenarios. Uh so I I believe I believe in you, Antonio, and I believe in America. Let's do this. All right, well, with that, we will say farewell for now to Mr. Elser, and we will jump right into round number one, which works like this. You're each going to get eight questions from eight different areas within the realm of general movie trivia. Should you get all eight questions correct, you'll be issued a bonus question. You have three repeats for the entirety of the match and a challenge rule. Any questions as we get into round number one, gents? Nope. All right, then we get into it with round number one, question number one, which comes in the category of horror. What 80s horror film takes place in the town of Santa Clara, California? Been to California? Never been to the 80s? Pretty big disparity on that one. California many times. Uh, one notably last year where Payson Johnson almost killed me three separate occasions in a vehicle. Uh, five, four, three. Two, one. Penn State will go to Antonio. Lost Boys. And we will go to Dean. The Lost Boys. The Lost Boys is correct. Both strike one, one. Let's get to your second question in the category of crime. Who plays Fredo in the Godfather franchise? Crime, a category of which Jack Pinchuk is quite familiar, having committed several war crimes in the former Yugoslavia. Uh, his uh, co conspirator, Caleb Oakland. Fun fact, he actually owns a small European country. True story, look it up on Wikipedia. You'll find it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, we'll go to Dean. I think I missed it. James Kahn. Uh, we're going to go to Antonio. I'm going to butcher his last name. Is it John Gazeo? 
Tommy. John Cazale is correct. So Antonio takes the lead two to one as we get to your third question, the category of mystery thriller. What profession does Nick Nolte's character have in Cape Fear? My dog staring at me from the doorway as if it is okay for him to walk in. He is just sitting right here. Chip, you are absolutely allowed to walk in here. This is your house just as much as mine. You don't speak English. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Antonio. The lawyer. And we'll go to Dean. No, police detective. Lawyer is correct. So Antonio extends that lead by two, stays perfect through three. As you get to your fourth question, halfway through the round, the category of scores and soundtracks. What song do Rick and Ilsa repeatedly ask Sam to play in Casablanca? Very famous film, a favorite of, I think, both managers backstage, uh, both fans of this one. Uh, so, interesting. Watch it for the first time this year. Chip, you are allowed to enter the room. I don't know why you ask. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we will go uh, back to Dean. Nothing. Uh, and Antonio. No idea. All length van. Fine. <laughs> uh, both are correct. No perfect rounds looking for as time goes by. As time goes by. Uh, so no perfect rounds as we go to your fifth question, the category of animation. What is the name of the toy store that Buzz and the gang go to in order to look for Woody in Toy Story 2? So in fact, the dog has entered the room. He now sits at my feet looking at me as if he did something wrong. And I don't really know what you could have done wrong. But you are a puppy. It's possible. Five, four, three, two, one. One pens down. We go to Antonio. Uh, Al's Toy Barn. And we go to Dean. Al's Toy Barn. Al's Toy Barn is correct. Four to two. My dog now in frame, as you can clearly see, as we get to your next question. In the category of Oscars, how many Oscars did Everything Everywhere All at Once win? And you'll get a little extra time on this one. Yes, my dog is in fact sitting here. And he is leaning just enough out of frame so that he doesn't see you are my dog. Therefore, you cannot be camera shy. It's not a thing that's allowed for you to be. You're a great co host. Get on camera. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we will go to Dean. I've got six. And we will go to Antonio. One, eight. You both shot on both sides, but the answer is seven. Oh. Seven Academy Awards. And there he is once again. Uh, your penultimate question comes in the category of biopics. Michael Sheen plays what real-life journalist in a 2008 biopic? And we are looking for first and last name. I wonder who would ever play me in a biopic. Many people might have suggested the kid who played Joffrey. Uh, ten years ago, could have done it. I believe at this point he is too old. It doesn't doesn't work anymore. I don't know. Some people have also said Ed Sheeran could do it. I think he has too much hair. Five, four, three, two, one. Things are falling down in the background. That is a problem. Uh, Pens down. We're gonna go to Antonio. Uh, David Frost. And we will go to Dean. I went the other way. Richard Nixon. David Frost is correct. So Antonio extends it five to two as we get to your final question of the round in the category of directors. Who directed Contagion? A film that was quite popular in recent years, once again, and honest to God, could never quite understand why. It terrified me. People are weird. I prefer dogs, as you can see. You're on camera, buddy. There you go. You see another version of yourself on the screen. You're freaking out. Five. Four, three, two, one. Pants down. We will go to D. Steven Soderbergh. Uh, and Antonio. Steven Soderbergh. Steven Soderbergh is correct. So at the end of round number one, I have Antonio in the lead six to Dean's three. But anything can happen as we get to round number two, which is the wheel round, which works like this. You're each going to get a chance to spin from the lovely wheel from wheelside.com. If you like the category you land on, you're going to get five questions worth two points apiece. You can opt to go down to multiple choice, but a D value is down to being only worth one. If you do not like what you land on the first time, you can spin again. If you are stuck with whatever you land on the second time, I believe all – Competitors have all three repeats uh, available, as well as their challenge. Uh, and there is stealing in this round. Any questions, gentlemen, as we get into round number two? No. All good. 
All right, Antonio, you are the higher rank competitor and in the lead, so we'll bring in your manager, Jake. Uh, would you like to go first or defer? I feel like deferring. Okay, that's fine. Great job, by the way. Uh, really, really strong round one. Uh, yeah, I think we can defer and yeah. see if you can take something off you don't want. Yeah, all right, so we'll defer. Deferring they are, so in comes the bane of my existence, one Jackariah <laughs> Pinchuk. Uh, for your spin at the wheel. Uh, and Dean, your first spin lands on the category of opponent's choice. So we'll say goodbye to Jack. You are effectively useless today. And we bring in Jake Meltzer. Uh, what would you guys like to give Mr. Manis? I love the absolute derision uh, thrown Jack and Chuck regularly. Um, <laughs> can, I, uh, can I get a look uh, yes. at the categories? Again, Absolutely. I, I forgot to do that as well. Your categories being on the wheel, John Carpenter, Law & Order, recent releases, scores and soundtracks, coming of age, actors and actors, horror and sports. William, scores and soundtracks? That's a really broad, that's a really yeah. broad category. Sure. Uh, Looks good to me. Pretty much impossible to study for. So, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's a, that's the way to go. You feel good okay. about that? Yeah, I feel good about that. Yeah. All right, let's give them scores and soundtracks. Scores, scores and soundtracks. And soundtracks is the choice. So we'll, we'll uh, make sure my dog is not killing anyone. And uh, bring up the categories. Uh, as Dean, you'll be getting your question the category of scores and soundtracks. Are you ready? Yep. All right, your first question. The band Oingo Boingo performs the opening song to which John Hughes comedy? Four, three. I'll go multiple two. choice. All right, multiple choice. Your options are A, 16 candles, B, she's having a baby, C, Curly Sue, or D, Weird Science. I'm going to say B. That is incorrect. Antonio, the chance for the one point still. Your options are A, 16 candles. B, she's having a baby. C, Curly Sue. Or D, Weird Science. I believe it's D, Weird Science. That is correct for the one-point steal. All right, Dean, your second question in the category of scores and soundtracks. Which 2010s Denzel Washington film featured the last original score from composer James Horner? Uh, multiple choice, please. All right, multiple choice options are A, Flight, B, The Equalizer, C, The Magnificent Seven, or D, Two Guns. Five. Four. Uh, can I get the options again? For sure. Your options again are A, Flight, B, The Equalizer, C, The Magnificent Seven, or D, Two Guns? I'm going to go B again. That is incorrect. Antonio, the chance for the one point steal. Your options are A, Flight, B, The Equalizer, C, The Magnificent Seven, or D, Two Guns? That is correct for another one point steal. Your third question, Dean. Which famous rock musician wrote and performed the song Dream Away for the film Time Bandits? Uh, multiple choice, please. Your multiple choice options are A, George Harrison, B, Elton John, C, Paul McCartney, or D, David Bowie. Uh, D. That is incorrect. I turn you the chance of one point still. Your options are A, George Harrison, B, Elton John, C, Paul McCartney, or D, David Bowie.
A. A, George Harrison is correct for another one-point steal. <coughs> All right, Dean, your penultimate question scores and soundtracks. Which film in the Transformers franchise features the songs I Can't Drive 55, Save a Prayer, and Never Gonna Give You Up on its soundtrack? Can I have a repeat, please? Yeah, that is your first repeat. Which film in the Transformers franchise features the songs I Can't Drive 55, Save a Prayer, and Never Gonna Give You Up on its soundtrack? Five, four. Bumblebee? That is correct for a big two points. And your final question in the category, Dean. Who composed the scores for the classic films To Kill a Mockingbird, The Great Escape, and 1969's True Grit? I got to go multiple. Three. All right. Your multiple choice options are A, Henry Mancini, B, Elmer Bernstein, C, Jerry Goldsmith, or D, Laulo Schifrin. It's got to be right one time, right? B. B is correct for one point. You're right. It would, it would yes. be right eventually. Uh, so with that, uh, Dean gets himself up to six. Antonio with those steals is at nine as we bring back Mr. Meltzer and the wheel for your spin. And your spin lands on John Carpenter, non-fandom John Carpenter. Would you like to keep it or spin again? I think we should spin that one again. Yeah. All right, then you're stuck with ever land on, on this spin, and you land on your strength of law and order. All right, finish him. Let's do this. All right. Antonio, your questions in the category of law and order. Are you ready? Yeah. Your first question. Michael Kamen composed the score for how many law and order films? Happy on the score uh multiple choice your multiple choice options are a5 b6 c7 or d8 six that is incorrect in the chance for the one point still your options are a5 B6, C7, or D8? Seven. That is correct for a one-point steal. All right, Antonio, your second question. In Beverly Hills Cop, what did Axel find in the crates at Maitland's warehouse, which he believes was used to hide the scent of the drugs? Coffee grounds. That is correct for two points. Your third question. In Lethal Weapon 4, while in Uncle Benny's restaurant... Who pulls the fire alarm, causing all the customers to flee? Riggs. That is correct for two more points. Your fourth question. What is the military ranking of Stuart in Lethal Weapon 2? Multiple choice. All right, multiple choice options are... A, Captain, B, Sergeant, C, Colonel, D, Lieutenant. Colonel? That is correct for one point. And your final question in Law and Order. What is the name of the cyber attack that Gabriel launches in Live Free or Die Hard? Uh, 
Multiple choice, let's be sure. Your multiple choice options are A, Fire Sale, B, Wasp Nest, C, Daisy Picker, or D, Cherry Bomb. Fire Sale. That is correct for one point. So at the end of round number two, I have Antonian Lee with 15, Dean trailing with seven. But Anthony has, can happen as we get to round number three, which is the pick your poison round. It works like this. You're each going to choose what categories you like at a one, two, three, and four point value from their competitors will play until there's a mathematical elimination. Your categories on the board tonight to choose being 2010s, comic book movies, Alfred Hitchcock, Westerns, crime, romantic comedies, animation, and directors. We'll let them choose the categories and get back to you momentarily. All right, our competitors have chosen their categories, and we will get right into it, starting with Dean, who is behind. So your one-point question, you have selected the category of directors. Your question is, who directed Apocalypse Now? Francis Ford Coppola. That is correct for one point. Your two-point question, you selected the category of comic book movies. And your question is, who directed Eternals? Five, four, three, two. Repeat, please. One. All right, that's your second repeat. Who directed Eternals? One. I'll use it. Repeat. Okay. As your final repeat. Who directed Eternals? Chloe Zhao. That is correct for two points. All right, so we move on to your three-pointer. I would be remiss to point out that I believe Dean needs both of these uh, to stay alive. Uh, so your three-pointer in the category of romantic comedies is name both of the actresses who play the Morton sisters in The Family Stone. Uh, okay, I'm going to go uh, Sarah Jessica Parker and Claire Danes. That is correct for three points. And so it all comes down to this. Dean needs to hit his four-pointer. If he does, Antonio's going to have to answer some questions to get out of here uh, with a win. Otherwise, if he misses, Antonio will be the winner. So, Dean, you have chosen for your four-point category 2010s. Your question is... What is the profession of the titular character in Mr. Turner? And we're looking for a semi-specific answer. Five. Four. Good game, Antonio. Uh, surgeon. One. And your winner, by way of technical knockout, the assassin, Antonio Chavez. The answer we were looking for was painter. He is a painter, uh, so we will put our competitors in the back. Uh, what a solid game. I think that that ended up being really close, down to the wire, all the way through. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll get thoughts from our competitors, starting with our unfortunate second place finishers first, Dean and Jack. Uh, you mounted a strong comeback there. It wasn't looking too pretty coming out of round two, but you did what you got to do to keep it within. Honestly, you kept it within two points coming into that. TKO is not going to look super like it's clear on the record, but you got real close to making that comeback, giving him a little bit of a sweat. Uh, how are you feeling about that match today? 
I, I actually feel okay. Um, it, the score didn't look great for me, but uh, a lot of those round ones are just out of my reach. Like they're just things I didn't couldn't quite click fast enough. Um, so it, like the round one kind of hurt me big time. And then obviously opponent's choice. Um, it gets kind of just like uh, Jake said, scores and soundtracks is, is hard to study for. I did a little bit, tried as best I could, but uh, they just weren't quite hitting me. Nothing was, nothing was really clicking like something I've looked into. So um, that was, it was just a yeah tough round two. And uh, if I could have got maybe a, him getting a, a sort of a better spin on the wheel, better for me, obviously, I might have been able to mount that comeback uh, at the end there. But uh, getting getting his uh, his deep cut strength there was uh, an opponent's choice on me. It's, it, it's, it was pretty tough, but I feel good. I feel good about the it, just the round one's kind of tough for me, but I, I'm not sweating it too much. Yeah, like Dean, honestly, this, uh, this uh, in, in spite of how the score may have looked uh, going into this round three, this was a way closer match uh, than the score suggests. Uh, it, there's not much you can do when you get opponent's choice and your opponent gets their strength uh, on their spin. So like that, that, that's just, that's just rough, but you, you answered the questions that, uh, that were in front of you. Uh, you did your absolute best. And I know that uh, this is uh Every loss is a learning experience, uh, so you learn from this. You'll come back. You'll kick some ass. I know you will, and you're a great player, great dude. Can't wait to see you back. Hey, uh, absolutely. Considering uh, that this does end your first run of the tournament, uh, is there anyone you are looking to face after this tournament maybe to get your footing back, someone you want to play at your next opportunity? I got, I got no one in mind. I, I'm never thinking about the next match, but uh, that makes me one in two now. Um, I, yeah, it just, uh, whoever, whoever's out there, I'm going to study hard for it. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try to get a, try to get a win. I haven't, haven't got a win yet this year. So I need one this year, just added to, you know, rogue nation, haven't been able to put one on the board yet for them. Um, so I'm feeling bad about that. Um, so I want to get, I want to get a win. So who, whoever's out there, uh, I'm coming. For sure. Strong words with Dean and we will see you post tournament. Hopefully whenever we get to see you again, uh, and we bring in our winner, Today, Antonio, you made it to round two of the tournament. It's been, I think, a tournament or two since you've been able to do that. You came in strong game, real strong game from you today. Uh, running up that round two, that first question maybe threw you off a little bit, then you just came back and waylaid the rest of it. Uh, didn't have to answer a round three. Uh, thoughts on your game today? How are you feeling? It actually feels good to finally have a good round one for the first time in a while. Uh, I always want to keep that uh, consistency up because I know round one's always a pain in the ass for me. I was glad to finally get my strength, and it's always nice to like not have to answer any round threes. But when I get if they ever got to that point, I want to be ready for it. Uh, Dean was a good player, uh, but yeah, I wanted to keep going. Uh, I haven't had the chance to really study much since I've been you know moving in here. I still like I have like no furniture. I'm just on like on a freaking just a chair. But I'm getting used to everything. I wish my fiance was here, but otherwise, uh, I look forward to starting this Virginia era of my career on a good note, and I uh, just hope to keep going in the tournament. Absolutely. Uh, Jake, thoughts? America. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, um, Antonio played great, I think. Um, like Jack said, I, I empathize it is difficult to overcome getting opponent's choice and then your opponent getting their strength. But I think Antonio's round one performance was indicative that he came to play today and I think he was going to be tough to beat. No matter what, if anything, I let Antonio down by not challenging that uh, Colonel Stewart question because it was tired to, not lethal weapon to, could have gotten him an extra point. But I'm still kind of new to the manager game. Got to get more confident with pulling the trigger on those challenges. Um, so I know I have something to work on, and I think Antonio will continue continue to put in the work. I'm really excited to see who he plays next round because he's been having a really awesome season so far and it's been i've having a blast managing him and i'm excited to get to keep doing it absolutely well uh is there anyone you're hoping to run into in this tournament i don't think we're really divulging matchups for the round twos yet but is there someone that you're hoping to run into in the next round of this tournament keep just no one from, my, from our faction <laughs> it's pretty much anyone else except anyone from our faction but yeah, yeah. 
It's truly, it's truly the real wish of every competitor. Just someone right. that I don't have to be friends with. Right. <laughs> uh, I definitely feel that. So uh, congratulations on the win. We'll see you again uh, in the next round. Uh, and that is going to do it for everyone here. I think it was a very solid round one. Antonio Chavez punches ticket to round two of the Summer Series Movie Melee Tournament. Uh, for everyone here, that has been Dean. That has been Jack. That has been Jake. That has been Antonio. I have been Caleb. And this has been Movie Melee. We'll see you guys real soon with another great match. Goodbye. Storm in the castle. Take it away. Take it away. Bye.